So the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society um, came out with recommendations in 2011 for the guidelines for continuous or prolonged EEG monitoring in a newborn. They had already produced the guidelines for the adult and pediatric population, but even the adult eeg -er was aware that the newborn is different and asked those of us um, with uh, interest and experience in the, um, in the newborn brain to form a subcommittee to come out with separate recommendations. These recommendations that the goal, gold standard, the ideal standard would be continuous uh, video EEG monitoring in anyone that is at high risk of having seizures because again they may be seizing and if it's a part of the brain that does not involve motor function you will not see a motor activity associated with their seizure and again since 80-90% of their seizures are going to be secondary to something that happened to that baby they're more likely to do it more than once. If you see seizures then to treat it based using the EEG as your guide for treatment and then to continue monitoring until you're seizure free for about 24 hours. So then you know effectively that you've stopped it, not just temporarily, but you've completely stopped it and then the, with 24 hours of seizure freedom, unlikely for that child to then suddenly break through and start up again. And those are the guidelines. Understanding, again, not all centers around the U.S., or much less in, in the world, are capable of providing uh, continuous video EEG monitoring, um, but large tertiary uh, NICUs are capable of providing that. And again, this is the kind of standard care an adult or pediatric patient is easily able to uh, receive. And for me, I don't see why we should not have the newborn have access to those same opportunities when we're talking about something that's impacting them at the very beginning of their life rather than at the end of their life uh, where there's less quality of life and also that there's less years of life that you can change um, and impact uh, by effectively treating their seizures and minimizing their brain injury. So going back to the question of why or should we be treating newborns and their seizures, it is very hard to answer that question um, because, again, since most of the seizures are as, as a result of an injury, how to measure the outcome as a result of the injury versus the result of the seizures, it's very hard to tease those two separately. Um, so, but some investigators have tried to tackle that question by looking at those babies that seize a lot meaning in status epilepticus or very near status epilepticus. And in that subpopulation of newborns who are having seizures, they have been able to demonstrate that the seizures are an independent risk factor for worse outcome. So again, one or two seizures may not be a big deal, but if you're having multiple seizures, seven or more, or in status epilepticus or near status epilepticus, it would make a difference to identify their seizures and to reduce their seizures as soon as possible to mitigate their outcome, not just because of the seizure, but of their underlying etiology. The other point I'd like to make is that this is not a seizure disorder. The seizures are a symptom. For example, you have a fever at the acute onset of your illness. It's not that you go have ongoing fever afterwards. So seizures in the newborn, unless it's for an intrinsic reason, is a symptom. They tend to stop, again, when the acute brain swelling stops. It, they do not have a seizure disorder, so they do not need to necessarily go home on any seizure medication. So babies with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, strokes, these are temporary uh, manifestations of their brain injury, not that they have a seizure disorder and do not need to go home on a multitude of medications. Um, babies that may have bleeds as a result of their that causing and provoking their seizures, blood takes a long time for the body to resorb and break down, and therefore it can continue to provoke seizures. And therefore, those babies are the ones that you might want to consider sending home on a seizure medication to give their body the time it needs to break down that blood and make it no longer a seizure-provoking um, risk factor. Um, otherwise, the, in terms of seizure medications and which ones to use, phenobarbital is still the first drug of choice throughout the world. Um, the second drug of choice in the past has been uh, phosphenatoin. 
Um, however, many providers are now going to levetiracetam as their as their second drug of choice. Uh, there's not any clear data at the point at this present that it is equally efficacious, uh, but because of the the more benign side effect profile for levetiracetam uh, that many um, providers are being um, uh, attracted to use that as a second choice. There are other options as well as you can see on the slide. There are multi about a half a dozen uh, seizure medications that are um, very commonly used in newborns who are having intractable seizures in the NICU uh, and different options. But in terms of IV options, it's phenobarbital, phosphenatoin, and levetiracetam. The other medications are there are no IV formulations and have to be given uh, through the NG tube or using the gut as a, a form of rapid um, absorption. Um, I particularly like to pyramate for cortical dysplasias or any brain malformations because that tends to work well. Um, oxcarbazepine or trileptol tends to work well with babies with genetic epilepsies that affect their sodium or potassium channel mutations um, because of the mechanism and the action of those drugs. So for me, deciding what drug to use is very dependent on what I feel is the underlying reason for why the child is seizing because I am aware that depending on the mechanism of action that some things are going to be better um, and more ideal, especially um, in the child who is developing their epilepsy in the newborn period. Those are the kids that uh, phenobarbital may not be the medication you decide to send them home on. Um, so fortunately, I've been able to convince you that newborns are capable of having seizures, um, that treating their seizures, particularly if they're having um, more than just a few, is important and may impact their outcome. Um, and that uh, seizure treatment is worthwhile in uh, newborn babies.